Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back on the mic with Mike. It is the leading daily social enterprise business show in the Richmond area. I'm your host, Mike King, and I appreciate you being here with me. Today is a, a different day, folks. Got a lot going on, and we're going to get to that. So, the views expressed here are mine alone, have no connection to, support of, or agreement with any other host information or ads on the station. I don't work for the station. I just bring my program to you on a daily basis, and I'm appreciative of that. So join me as this cutting-edge show uplifts the community and showcases RVA in a different way. The sounds you're listening to are emanating from the Mike King Biz Studio, which is the global epicenter of social enterprise here in the area. Joining us today, as always, is the man on the wheels of steel, the super producer, Al Green. And we can be reached by calling 804-778-8888. On the mic with Mike, we highlight partnerships, people, social enterprise, business, and organizations, and we touch on some issues of the day. There are a few issues of the day that are going on out there, I think. We'd like to thank our show sponsor, Tom Childry, the credit card guy. If you're a credit card merchant issues uh, services, Tom Childry is a person who can help. Tom has been doing it for a long time. He does excellent work, and he has some great ideas and solutions to issues that you may be having. Tom can be reached at by calling 804-503-8472. He also does a lot of work with the uh, nonprofits out there. Along the way, we have to pay bills. I always say that. Please support our sponsors and advertisers as they have some great products and services. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Friday. It's the day before Halloween. I think we got an election coming up. We're going to turn back the hands of time. We're, are we turning back or falling? I'm not sure what we're doing. Fall. We're falling forward. I think it's fall back, spring ahead. We're falling back. Okay, we got some experts in the house. We'd like <laughs> to thank them. This is a business show, so we're going to definitely stay on our toes. We got a great show today. My friend is in the building. We got Stephanie Merlot. She was formerly, she was the artist formerly known as Steph B. Mm -hmm. So she's, she's here <laughs> with us. We're going to be talking Veterans Affairs, LGBTQ, what's going on in Richmond. She has some personal family history, too, that's going to blow people's minds. Yeah. That, that one is outstanding. We got, oh, you know what else we got, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. Billy. He is, I'm going to try and be politically correct here. He's a black man librarian. I know. That's the same thing I said. Oh, nothing. So, nothing at all. Not, no. You know what? <laughs> We're going to take a poll of when was the last time we had seen a man who was a librarian who was black. So Mr. Billy is going to be here. He has three King Visions. He is dynamic, teaching the kids how to enjoy reading. So he's going to be truly, that's going to be fun with him. Shelly Beck is going to be here. They're, they are doing a fundraiser for, and that's a... They're going to be doing a fun, a clothing, a winter coat drive. So she's going to be here as well. And you know what today is. Today is, it's Friday. It is Modern Love with Paula Pardell. So it's all you folks who are out there swiping left and tindering and whatever else you're doing. See, it's changed a little bit from uh, when I was out there in the game since 1982. Uh, back in those days, we used <laughs> to have, Paula, is there something called the Lonely Hearts Club? No, you know. I've heard Oh, well, she's heard of that. that. That's dating me. Okay, we will talk about that at the bottom of the hour. Up next, we have Stephanie. Steph, welcome back to the program. Yeah, I'm, yeah thanks for having me. I'm super excited to be here um, uh, on this bright Friday. Um, I think I got paid, so that's nice. You know what? That's always a blessing. Right, right. Yeah. When you, and you wear multiple hats. Go down, so now let's talk about veterans. We'll start there. Oh, man. You're a vet, too. I am a vet. Okay. Apparently, I'm a, I'm a veteran in marriage. As you are. Hey, congratulations. <laughs> you got one year in. I'm yeah. telling you, if you can pull it off, the first year is no different than year 39 for me. Mm -hmm. It's it's one day at a time like the, like the show. You guys make it look good, too. Oh, well, thank you. We have a lot of fun, and I think that's part of you know, having a really good relationship is just picking on each other, having a good time. and Even when your AC goes out, you guys have fun. Look, <laughs> just, I just had a moment. AC went out on July the 4th, and it was a hot mess express. It was so nasty. But you had friends who were willing to step in. And yeah. I've seen people say, hey, we'll bring you over a room a air conditioner. Yes. Yeah, we had a couple friends that um, that that lent us a, uh, like some portable ACs, and I just sat there with like my shirt open, just <laughs> like something on Titanic, just... 
letting the breeze hit me. And then my dogs were like, we want some. And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's only enough to go around here for us. I don't. <laughs> okay. All righty. So veterans, what do you, what yeah. do you do there? Um, well, with the veterans community, um, I am recently the new chapter leader of Minority Veterans of America here in Richmond. So we have a couple chapters. We have one in Atlanta. Um, and then our main place is, uh, of course, Seattle, Washington, which is where everything kind of started. Okay. So. Okay. Let's move this. There we go. Um, but yeah, so with minority veterans, of course, we are focusing on, naturally, the minority of the folks. This is whether it's with um, religion, uh, people of color, LGBTQ+. Uh, these are folks who are, are kind of underrepresented when it comes into the military. Um, even though we have had, you know, don't ask, don't tell has been repealed, it still is, you still don't feel comfortable um, will serving, you know, openly, you know, there's still that weird dynamic where if you, um, especially I can imagine for the male community, um, where it feels really awkward if you're in the, the trenches, as they say, yes. with, um, your fellow, fellow soldiers, um, you know, you, you feel like you really can't 100 be yourself. You have to prove yourself to be more of a man because, you know, you know what I mean? Like, if you are gay, you have to be more manly. Than um, men. Than, than men. The other men. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so there's there's all these, you know, of course there's these weird dynamics that happen. I myself, I served during Don't Ask, Don't Tell. So I was I was in that, that weird time frame. And, and it, even though there was Don't Ask, Don't Tell, that's what the paper said. Right. And everyone knew from the beginning of time how it was viewed in the military right and you still but even when it's all said and done when things go haywire things go sideways mm -hmm. people put that to the side they yeah. don't care what time it is then right exactly exactly like and that's and that's just that's a very good point like okay like i i'm being fired upon or whatever i don't care what uh, are you doing? we don't care what you yeah just i need you to have my back but then there was times in garrison you it know makes what I mean? it tough it makes it tough so um me myself I I was not open. There was small pockets of people that knew. Um, however, I tried to keep it as low-key as possible. Um, if I did anything, it was like far away off post. Like if we went to a gay club, oh, that stuff was like three hours away. Mm -hmm. um, we were not going to jeopardize that because, I mean, that would be my career. And I wanted to, at the time, have a career in the Army. Um, naturally, a lot of things played in where it completely changed my mind, and that was the way um, women were treated, well, at least on our post, lots of sexual harassment. And that, to me, was very hard because, like you said, like when we are, when it comes down to brass tacks and we are out there and, you know, fighting with one another, it doesn't matter then, but... When we get back... One base, and we mm -hmm. get back when things go back to some somewhat normal. Yeah, it turns into all of the problems that that we have in society exist. Right. So let me ask you a couple questions. So you didn't open, you weren't openly out. Mm -hmm. At what point did you realize, okay, that I got to come out with this, and, and I'm going to be what I'm going to be? <laughs> um. So, oh man, I remember I was dating this girl. And I was like, you know what? This is it. Like, I'm. I ain't going back over there. Yeah, just, just, just come out clean. And I think, honestly, just a reverse rewind, really quick. When I was in the tenth grade, it was when I really realized that I was attracted to women, and it was all because of an uh, Ali, <laughs> Alicia Keys music video, "Fallen," and then Shakira, "Whenever Whatever" came on, and I was like, yo. Oh. So, <laughs> so okay, Al. So <laughs> when we're sitting there looking at that, and you're doing hips don't lie and yeah. whatever, whatever. Yeah. You're looking, saying the same thing. Yeah, I'm like, no, her hips don't lie at all. Um, <laughs> and so I like that was my moment. And then I went into the military and I was like, all right, you know, no, I like men, you know, but you tried to you tried to. Beat. I did. I did. OK, it. so what point did you come out with the family and say uh, that was tough? Um, that was the most that was the most uh, it was such a hard time for me. And I was at my lowest moment honestly I was so depressed I was suicidal I did not want to be there and and I, it wasn't just because of the fact that I was struggling with being myself it was also because of other elements within the military so whenever I called my mom and I was it was it was very I remember being down in the very bottom of the barracks and there's this like weird cubby area where you had your phones and you have to use a calling card because this is Germany 
And I remember like calling my mom and I was like, hey, how's it going? And she's like, oh, hey, you know, how's everything there? I was like, it's cold. Um, and I just remember like having the phone and just kind of looking over my shoulder, looking around the corner just to make sure that no one was watching or listening in. And then you let it rip. Yeah. And I said, mom, I have to tell you something. And it was quiet. And she goes, you're pregnant. And I said. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> not exactly that yeah one. yeah and she and i said what no and she goes you're gay and i was like yes how did you she goes oh we've I always know. known See, yeah that's the thing yeah you always okay you always know now i okay so the time is 118 i got stephanie merlot here with us uh we got to talk about some other things but you got to come back at a different time because we got history too yeah we do uh, we, we got we got some history that has to do with civil war stuff and <laughs> it was crazy yeah, we can definitely okay. like reach on that real quick if yeah. you want to. That's okay, so here. Fine. Okay, so I invited Steph to go to uh, the American Civil War Museum with me, mm -hmm. along with us. Now, I didn't know her. I just reached out and said, "Hey, would you like to go to what someone may consider a little bit of a different scenario?" Yeah, and I was like, "Yes." She's gonna go. Okay, <laughs> so we asked my Jewish friend, Doctor Sarah. You want to go? Yes. Okay, we wanted. Uh, she's from Friendship Circle. We also asked. Uh, uh, Sandra. Sandra Wilson mm -hmm. from Black Connections. Let's go to the American Civil War Museum. Everyone was kind of apprehensive. Dr. Sarah really looked at me and said, Mike, we got history. But going to the Civil War Museum, why are we here? Mm -hmm. It was a little different. But it was an experience that we learned stuff. Oh, yeah. Talk a little bit about what that was like that day. Oh, man. So <laughs> <laughs> the Civil War history, well, one, here in Richmond is... I, I don't want to say it's outstanding, but there's so much, you know, and going there, I was like, mm, the first thing you're going to see when you walk into that Civil War Museum is a huge picture of uh, Frederick Douglass right there that sets the tone of what you're going to see when you go throughout this museum. This is not going to be your typical Civil War Museum. No. So that is one thing that I recognized and realized when I walked in. The next thing I saw was Harriet Tubman. I was like, oh, okay. You we're know. doing pretty good. Yeah, uh, yeah. We were concerned going in. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it was such a... It was such a cool experience because like you're walking through there and it, yes it was touching on important pieces of the civil war like how the civil war started um what were some pivotal um, points in the civil war um battles and and turning points and um, pow camps all of this stuff and then at the end you talked you saw how um you know as black folks started to rise above it and you know post-civil war and then one thing that i um last year as you know when we were doing Black Lives Matter marches, um, I was, it was Juneteenth. Okay, so we got to get, so now this is the segue, folks. This is where it turns to a personal family history story. Mm -hmm. Okay, you got to drop that one on us. Yes, so um, Juneteenth, we all, well, I we, can't say we all cause some because some folks I didn't all. know. Mm -hmm. When Donald Trump said that he informed a lot of people, a lot of folks from up north had never really heard of Juneteenth. Right. Um, even even somebody that I work with said, well, Juneteenth is whenever um, the Civil War ended. I was like, oh, my gosh, no. Now I'm from Texas, and so we celebrate Juneteenth. I mean, there are parades, and there, I mean, it's a thing. And um, so quickly, give our listeners the uh, what exactly Juneteenth. Is. Yeah, absolutely. So Juneteenth, of course, is going to be whenever slaves in the South found out that they were actually free. So, you know, you had the um, Emancipation Proclamation. Now, that only freed slaves in the South. That did not free slaves in the North. That passed two years before the actual Civil War ended. So when the Civil War ended, you still had... Um, you know, slaves in the South who were just doing their thing. Now, finally, it's the end of the Civil War. There are free blacks up, up here, you know, they're starting to travel around. They're starting to try to get their footing. You have people coming by, and then you have the general in Galveston. It's like, uh, you guys are free. You guys... Nah, nah, nah. And it took how long? Uh, it took... I think it took an additional year. Wait, now that's something. Yeah, and, and it's... You know, blame it on the transportation. I don't care. <laughs> but either way, it's it, it was something. It was too long. It's too long because, you know, they were already enslaved for God knows how long. And now here we are um, still working in these fields. Now, the cool thing is, is that afterwards, you know, we want to celebrate our freedom, right? We want to celebrate that moment that the general came down to Galveston, read that proclamation and said, all of you guys are free. And that is when Juneteenth came around. And I'm proud to say that my great-grandfather times four was one of the founders of Juneteenth 
down in Texas. So, and we had seen the the newspapers and stuff. Tell a little bit about your family history with that. Now the time is one twenty three, so we gotta we gotta move this one along here. <laughs> let let folks know mm -hmm. like the meaning of what it means when your family is right there at the beginning of Juneteenth. It was. It's such a. I, 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 I can't even find the words because it was such a proud moment and it's so exciting and it's just like, wow, we have our footprint in history. And, you know, my great grandfather was one of the richest black men in Texas right. and opened up some of the first black schools and he made sure that he was taking care of his community. And what the and re, I remember you telling me what the end result of that was what society had done. Mm -hmm. to the family wealth yes so a lot of the um land was pretty much swindled he was um he was kidnapped by the kkk um beaten and he had to sign over some of the mineral rights to his land which is of course like oil um liquid gold back in the day and so yeah there was a lot of money that the family has lost because of that and it really, it really sucks. So now, you're, ladies and gentlemen, we're here with uh, Stephanie Merlot. Now, let's talk a little bit about you are the executive, no, you the incoming president. President, current president. The current president mm -hmm. for Virginia Pride. Right. Okay, let's talk a little bit about what's going on with Virginia Pride. What's the mood out there these days? Mm -hmm. And uh, how are we getting along? I mean, I feel like it, it's, it's touch and go right now just because we were supposed to have our Pride Fest last month. We could not have that because obviously for COVID. So this is a tough time because we are unable to really do our fundraising. We are unable to really um, go out there and communicate with our community like we normally do. So um, it's kind of stagnant right now. Okay. And uh, but yeah, I'm hoping that next year it'll pick back up we can do a pride fest i would love to have a parade at some point you know try to pick it up here in richmond um bring all of us gays out and have a good time all right the time is 125 with that being said we got to go away for a moment we'll be back shortly Hi, I'm Tom Childry, the credit card guy with Beyond. I believe it should not be confusing or expensive for your business to accept credit cards. As a social enterprise business advocate, my mission gets you paid faster with fair rates, helping your business grow. We can be contacted at area code 804-503-8472, 804-503-8472, or at getbeyond.com. Again, I'm Tom Childry, the credit card guy. Quick, easy collect. We make it easier than you expect. Chris Chip here with Focus Floors, and we are offering a free upgrade in any Bono water-based poly for any job that gets put on our schedule. Uh, you can reach us at FocusHardwoodFlooring.com or just check us out on Facebook or Instagram. Facebook, uh, Focus Floors 804, Instagram 804. Thank you. Are you experiencing difficulties with paying your mortgage or bringing your mortgage current? If so, we can help. Give Neighborhood Home and Assistance a call at 1-800-441-6872 or text 757-951-3048 for an immediate response. We have over 10 years of mortgage experience working with some of the largest mortgage corporations in America. For more information, visit NeighborhoodHomeAssistance.com to schedule your free over-the-phone consultation. Remember, time is one thing we can't get back, and your home is your investment. Act fast. Hi, my name is Daquan Woodbury, also known as Chef PQ. The restaurant industry is going through a hard time right now. With COVID-19, a lot of things are going on, restaurants are shutting down, they might have to even close their doors for good. In the past few months, we've seen how life can change dramatically in a blink of an eye. Fortunately, I've created a system, a proven system, that allows restaurants to stay successful in this new way of life. As the owner of RVA Cafe, I would love to help you through these challenging times. Go to redindigofood.com for more information. Hi everyone, it's Pavi Leitner, the CEO and founder of Finlit and your family certified financial educator dedicated to the financial success 
of you and your family. Are you not sure where to start with your finances? Or are you looking to sign your middle schooler up for our virtual camp? Book us at www.finlitva.com. That is www.finlitva.com. Finlit is creating a money conscious community. Mike King isn't a businessman. He's a businessman with his own talk show. On the mic with Mike, the best business radio program in the game. <laughs> Tune into On the Mic with Mike Election Day Special on WJFN. This is You Know Who, and that day you will hear spirited talk about if moving trucks will be needed to move my stuff. By the way, you know this message is sponsored by Mike King Biz. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back with uh, Stephanie Merlot. Okay, so, so let's talk a little bit about uh, the resources available in the uh, community for uh, younger people or people who are trying to find ways to, to come out and, and be who they truly are. Yeah, I mean... All of the the little baby gays out there, it's tough. I can imagine it's tough, and and there's some whose whose parents are not accepting, and that's even harder because you know whether you are trying to identify yourself as um, gay or a lesbian or bisexual or binary or um, trans, it's it's very tough on a on a on a kid. Okay. Can can one good thing about this program can i ask you a question mm -hmm. when i see the i see a name and i see he she you know like what what exactly does that mean that's your pronoun so that's how you identify as so those like you identify as what a man a man so mm -hmm. you would be he his you know mm -hmm. um i identify as woman i'm a cisgender woman i identify as a woman i present myself as a woman um i am that's where you see she her hers um, those who are um, non-binary, um, gender fluid, they, um, that's where you have the pronoun there. They're, they're, theirs. Oh. Yeah. Um, so you don't say like um, he over there, like, oh, I was talking to him. You say, oh, I was talking to them. Or, yeah, they are going to the store. And so that's where the pronouns come into play. And it's very important. And it might seem something silly and small to some people, but that is a very important thing for those who do not identify as male or female. They, it, it is something that is very important to make sure you are addressing them as such. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we, we're trying to get some resources for young, the baby gays. Or, or <laughs> who are trying to figure. See, ladies and gentlemen, that's what this program is. This is a business program like no other. We're helping. This is business life and everything yeah. in between. Yeah. So what, what resources are out there for parents and kids and everyone trying to make it through? Absolutely. Um, the youth in our LGBTQ community also need resources just like adults. And here in Richmond area, Charlottesville as well, we have side-by-side. And so side by side is the support group um, generally for the ages 11 through 20. And um, they have support groups that facilitate like, um, you know, help with health. Um, they have uh, little group talks that they have as well. It's it's something that I think is very useful for those who are still trying to find their own way and trying to find that right path. But also those who are having issues really coming to terms with their own identity. Okay. That's good. So talk a little bit about, if you would, where, you know, whether it's discrimination or trying to find your place in the business world. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I uh, know. There we go. Yeah. And ladies and gentlemen, if you're not looking on Facebook, she started rubbing her head. <laughs> and that one up. Yeah. Discrimination in the workplace is... It's still, a, it's still a thing. I mean, like, I myself was fired for being gay when I first got out of the Army. and But so they just can't come up and roll up and say, hey, we're no. fine. So we're going to try and wrap it up in a whole bunch of different other things so we can protect ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was just like, oh, um, well, you're just um, you're just a fish out of water here. You're not really uh, fitting you in. Ain't rolling, you ain't swimming with the other fish around. Yeah, right, exactly. You're, you're not fitting in with the other school. So you're kind of out there swimming along to your own little wave. And I was like, just say I'm gay. Like, just say it. And it was, it was 
it was like that moment because that guy actually that manager actually would come up to me and like so how do you and your girlfriend you know how do y'all do it Duh. i'm oh. not even kidding okay. and before i could report him the next week he fired me and um i could not find a job for a whole year and that was because um this was during the recession so I spent all of my savings that I had in the military. Um, it was like $25,000, spent it all because I needed to survive. And See that, a, a woman can come out of the military and say they say 25 grand. <laughs> <laughs> I've known a lot of men, a lot of years, a lot of places. <laughs> there were too many opportunities to spend. Yeah. When, I mean, and you know, you've seen the men. Um, yeah, I, crazy. you know what, I'm not even gonna lie. I was one of them, like buying random laptops, computer, I mean, like, uh, Xboxes. I had a whole rock band series, the drums, the guitar. Do you need a bass? I got you. And, uh, I mean, you're bored. It, it <laughs> you're bored, yes. <laughs> and boredom can be problematic at times. Yes, it can. Okay, so that's the resources. That, what's, how's the community for, uh, Richmond as a whole? open-mindedness and what has the whole whether it's black lives matter this whole uh summer been to the community you know it's that's a wonderful question um i feel honestly the community now we are dealing with another recent shooting you know there in philly I know. and so here we are again at this place you know what when is this going to end um richmond of course i feel like we are rising above this i feel that with the monuments coming down we are getting to a better place and we're being heard that to me is saying that at least that's that's my own personal opinion um i feel like i'm being heard by this um with the lgbtq community uh, as you know i was really upset because i felt like we were not stepping up um being someone who we have always fought for our place um we have always fought for our injustices and um folks in the in the black community have also stood with us and fought as well and here we are not stepping up to the plate and i was i was so upset i was hurt but um that's when of course we had our um, I organized, helped organize a march um, in, 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 in um, June, um, the, you know, the LGBT March for Black Lives, and that brought over 700 people. And this was just a bunch of us LGBTQ plus folks, um, you know, as well as those within the POC community, uh, people of color community, um, coming along and were marching. And we landed at the uh, police training headquarters. And it was a peaceful protest. And we had them all turn their backs away from the police because they were ready. They were ready. They had riot gear. They had their gas. They had armored vehicles and were ready to just go at us. And we had them turn their backs to give them absolutely no reason to sit there and act out towards us. And even though that they were tweeting saying that there were no children in the, in the crowd and we were antagonizing them, which was a lie, um, there were kids there. I had a whole family of kids right in front of me and um i and and no one was antagonizing them that's what they were saying and it was like they were looking for a reason to to try to start something we left um nothing happened i told as as i left i told them i said you know everybody let's go back to to um diversity let's rest get some water i know it's hot everybody's sweating and i looked at the police officers over there right gear. i was like i know you're sweating you're all out here in this unnecessary riot gear you got sweat dripping down your butt cheeks right now so why don't you go take care of yourself clean yourself up and because you're out here for no reason trying to intimidate us go take care of yourself and your morals and uh it got a round of applause. I was proud of that. And, but it, it was true. It's just, there's a lot of unnecessary hate going on right now. That is true. And we're trying to squash some of that with the election coming up. <sighs> yeah. uh, between that, the pandemic, the financial crisis. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Stephanie. She's here. I'd like to thank her for coming in. We, she has to come back because we, we got more stories and more things to talk oh, yeah. about. I'm what's here. going on. So how can people find you and uh, and support the groups that you work with? Oh, my gosh. Okay, here we go. I got a list. I got a list. So you can always follow me. Um, my Instagram is at Steph B R V A. Um, you can also find me on Facebook, Stephanie Merlot. Um, you can follow Minority Veterans at Minority Veterans um, on, on Instagram and I also have a couple other folks who are out there in 
trying to make a difference. Got to give them a shout out. Got to give them a shout out. Pamela Heal. Um, this is a network oh. that's meant for healing. Yes, at Pamela Heal. Um, at Pamela. At the real Pamela Heal. At uh, the Heal Network. Was she one of the forty under? 40 or something like that i'm not sure she's out there doing her thing she's from kansas city and well no she was in kansas city now she's in california okay. doing her thing um we're all out there i have a group of women that i work with who are out there making a difference when it comes to sexual harassment when it comes to military change when it comes to systemic change okay who else you got i'm sorry for oh no go ahead that was um, it? yeah yeah i mean myself um and lindsey church thank you for everything that you've given me virginia pride as well so you can follow us at va pride um you can also find us on facebook minority by of America. Look us up on Facebook and on Instagram, Twitter. We're here for you. Resources out there for you veterans who need COVID relief. Please look us up at Minority Veterans. Ladies and gentlemen, I told you she was a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. Oh, uh, thankful that she came in. We got to go to way to take a break. We'll be back on the other side with uh, Paula Pardell and Modern Love. We're going to follow that up with Modern Love. <laughs> cool. Appreciate it. Thanks now. All the love. <laughs> Welcome to the SBA Weekly Business Tip. I'm Martin Short with the U.S. Small Business Administration, Virginia Richmond District Office. There are primarily four ways to fund your business. One way is crowdfunding. Crowdfunding raises funds for many people. Crowdfunders aren't technically investors because they don't receive a shared ownership in the business. Crowdfunding is popular because it's a very low risk for business owners. Crowdfunding platforms are different. Read the fine print and understand all the obligations. To learn more, visit us at sba.gov VA. We're here to help you start, grow, expand, or recover. Does your home need a makeover? If so, refresh with quality with LA Labor and Painting, LLC. They make your home sparkle and be the envy of the community. They are masters at interior and exterior painting, drywall, they clean decks, they landscape, and remove items you wish were gone. The bottom line is, they refresh with quality, provide professional service, and follow all guidelines regarding COVID-19. Call today to make your home sparkle. You can reach LA Labor by calling 804-972-8014. Call today for the On The Mic With Mike discount. When you mention the program, you'll receive 20% off of the beautification of your most prized possession. Call LA Labor and Painting today at 804-972-8014. Since the very beginning, CEO Magazine has been empowering women to be the chief executive of their lives. Sharon's dream was to create this lifestyle publication that helped women manage the hustle and bustle of their everyday. From hair to makeup and photo shoots to the look of your brand and even messaging. Whether you are being featured on our front cover or inside our magazine or simply partner with us, our team of people go to work for you. You sign up for a complete experience. You can share your story on our social media platform or comment network at one of our events. As CEO, we want to see you thrive, innovate, and create the life that you'll love. Hi, this is Melanie Staples. I'm from Waterfall Salon and Massage Med Spa with two beautiful locations in Glen Allen and Bonaire, Virginia. Our business is growing and we're looking for spa professionals just like you. So if you're a mature person that would like to get some extra cash and be a front desk receptionist, or if you are a spa professional who is, has expertise in waxing or eyelash extensions, or as a master esthetician, we would love to have you. Um, if you are a massage therapist and would love to get the experience of working with a master medical massage practitioner, NASA Staples, Waterfalls is the place to be. Please give us a call at 804-644-4002 or visit us online and to submit your application. We look forward to meeting you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kashfia Rashid, but you can call me Cash. I am an accounting strategist. I help business owners set up and maintain a customized automated bookkeeping system. You see, accounting is the language of business, but not all small business owners are fluent. I translate accounting into English 
empowering my clients to work in their zones of genius with comprehensive reports that easily show them the opportunities they can take advantage of to grow their business. I use automation to take care of the daily transaction processing, freeing up time, energy, and resources, all while restoring peace and sanity. All companies need a little cash. You can find out more on my website, www.cashthebookkeeper.com. Hi, Chef Michelle here of Mama Michelle Cafe, home of the Soul Rolls, located at 10811 Hall Street Road. Give us a call at 804-912-1644 or order online at mamashelves.com. Ask about our off-site catering options as well as our online ordering through Grubhub, Uber Eats, and DoorDash. Follow us on all social media at Mama Shelf Cafe. That's Mama Shelves, Soul South of the James. Mention Mike on the mic and get a free dessert on us. Special rules apply. Oh, hello. I'm Louise Keaton from the Whistle Stop Theater Company. You're listening to On the Mic with Mike. Every day. At 1 p.m. Cheers. Back to on the mic with Mike. It is Friday. It is Modern Love. We got Paula Pardell with us. Still, we have Steph Merlot. She's with us as well. We turned this into a, a COVID. Uh, you know, okay, we're we're social distancing, trying to make this correct here. Uh, so, Paula, welcome to Friday. Thanks, Mike. I'm excited to be here. Okay, Halloween so weekend. Halloween weekend. <laughs> That's my jam. I love Halloween. I can imagine. <laughs> Now I can, for some reason, I can just imagine you liking Halloween. I do. Our house was always like one of the houses that was decorated, you know, a lot. Okay, so Halloween. Stephanie, so now you're here. This is a, a, a matchmaking show. <laughs> it is Halloween. Mm -hmm. We need a, 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 a dating horror story. <laughs> a dating horror story. <laughs> I don't even know if the one I have is actually safe to say. Okay, so <laughs> well, we're gonna try. So we don't have that panic button here. Yeah. But if well, we see our blood pressure starting to yeah, go up and yeah. blood popping, you know, we'll know that we're a, getting in trouble. There's this thing um, that you know when you're at the club. You know what I mean? You're just having a good time. You're like dancing. You're like, yeah. You're just getting it, and the lights are low. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you don't know who you're really truly dancing with. Okay. So wait, wait a second now. I'm from a different time. The lights are low, mm -hmm. but they're always bright enough to see. No, 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 no. no. You, every once in a while, you get that glimpse because it's like a random strobe light, and you like think like, oh, maybe. But then you know, you're just like, ah, yeah, you're just gonna have a good time. Yeah. And then you like when the lights are finally back on because it's like, all right, you know, it's close time. Thank you for coming out. And you turn around because you're, you know, well, me at least, I'm just like, hey, hey, like in front. Turn around and it's like teeth are like look like they can eat corn on a cob through a picket fence. Okay. Eyebrows tossing up gang signs. <laughs> I'm like, I cannot. This was a lie. You were deceitful. I do not appreciate this. But at what point <laughs> did they start selling <laughs> what you thought they were? They were that person when you when you rolled up on them and said, Hey Hey, well you know what? The lights um, and, and drinks were involved. I was um you were in the military too, so oh, that oh, does yeah. that does say something right there because yeah. we all have the horror stories. You know, <laughs> uh, yeah, I've definitely had some. <laughs> Did I've you had find that when you were in Germany that they were much more accepting of you? Oh, one hundred percent. Whenever I was off post, it was just because I mean, like, I feel like they were not um, prude in in Germany. There's like, hey, be you, do your thing. Mm -hmm. um, we're just here for beer. I don't care. Um, you know, so it was definitely easier. But again, for half the time in Germany, I was playing a straight girl. So right. and that in itself was a horror story. I, I never forget 
this time, this guy I was dating, he's like, so, uh, Brown, you want to come up to my barracks room? I, I made you some dinner. And I was like, okay, free food. And I go up, and he had this Dixie plate. He had this um, sir sirloin steak that looked like he beat it to death. There were some green beans and corn. And he had it on his foot locker. And then there were some candles lit. And then in the background, you heard, like, old school, you know, yeah. jam. So you hear, like, Keith Ooh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just wanna be with you, and I was like, what? and he knew what time it was. Right, I was like, what is happening? And I, I go in, and this man was laid out on his bed with a blanket oh, draped Lord. over his groin area, and I was oh. like, this is look, look at. <laughs> I was looking up saying, so the question, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> is what happened to the state? It gets it was, look. It gets that, worse. The steak was for after. Yeah, yeah. It gets worse oh, from so. here. I sit next to him, and he's like touching my bag. I'm over here playing with the steak and the green beans with like the plastic fork. I'm like, mm mm mm. Oh, this looks good. And he moves the blanket. So you could see. Oh God. The most horrid smell. Oh. <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen. This is definitely That's the, bad. the, the, the so Halloween bad. show. Oh, my God. When you expect, I'm, I mean, there are a number of ways that that was going, and that was not that was the bad. one that I was expecting. It was the most horrid smell. Turned out he actually had gonorrhea. Oh, God. Oh. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so... <laughs> I myself, of course, I never did anything with him because, of course, I don't like that. Um, plus, there was a smell like what the oh. I, I am not going to no. So it was the most nauseating smell ever. Um, that the was question is, what happened to the food? Yes, the smell. The, that food, just the food stayed there because I didn't want anything that was that pungent that touched <sighs> my food. Because it was like, you know, the smell. Sometimes you can taste the smell when you smell it. <laughs> and I feel like it hit the food. So mm. I was like, well, the food's a loss. I'm just going to go home. Thank you. Um, maybe I'll see you on post sometime. Stay blessed. Ladies oh, and that's gentlemen. that's terrible. I did <laughs> that, not expect the that, smell. So that was the, the, the moral of this story is... Paula, is there a moral to this story? I don't, it's, just, <laughs> well, it's just terrifying. I think the moral of the story, if you go into someone's <laughs> barrack and they just have a towel over their stuff, it's time to go. Yeah, just turn at around. At that point. Turn you know? around. But I think as women, we don't know what to do in that situation. Mm -hmm. we're, we're expected to be like, oh, you know, it's okay and accepting or whatever. But, you know, that's a major red flag. And I talk to that, you know, talk to my clients about that all the time. It's like, you have to know these red flags and get and stick to your red flag mm -hmm. and you know yeah that should be a red flag and get the heck out of there because yeah. you don't know it it could have turned dangerous actually it really 100 percent, 100 percent, and um i agree like my red flag was you know the the music and the candles and the dixie plate with the steak and but i didn't have to defend the dixie plate and the candles and things it because you know it was I was right. I was dating in the back, so I was pulling out moves like that. I was going right down there with the foot locker yep. and the Dixie plates and the punch you know what, you were and right. all of that. You're and, right. you, and so You're right. my wife could come on and definitely say, I used to have the wall locker open and a blanket over it so it would separate us from the other people in the room. Stop. Yes. How big so. was this wall locker? <laughs> it was one of the big brown ones, <laughs> but I used to have it. Up. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Steffi is here with us, and it is a modern love. It's the day before Halloween, uh, and this is really going crazy. So, uh, I uh, got something you want to talk about yes. today. Yes, okay, see, thank you, Paula, because mm -hmm. you're, you're trying to get this back on track, and we well, need so supervision. I was a sponsor of the Big Pig Project for the Ronald McDonald House of Richmond, oh. and it was supposed to be this huge event, but, of course, you know, stupid COVID ain't going nowhere. Yeah, it's not. So... They had an event on Wednesday, which was a lot of fun. It was lunch. It, at, it was at lunch and supper. And what they are doing, they are doing an online auction of these pigs. They're like plaster pigs, and you get to paint them, mm -hmm. and you can brand them with your um, logo and stuff like that. And you really should check out their website. And you know, it's such an incredible charity. They do so many good things for you know families that have children that sit that are sick, and they they help them out and they make them comfortable. They put them up in a hotel. They feed them. It's just so awesome. Mm -hmm. But it, it's an awesome um, project. But my piggy, I love her. I named her Venus. Mm, of and course you did. the whole thing was 
find your Venus with blue matchmaking. So I, I like it because it's got a double meaning. It means like, you know, a guy can find his Venus, but also a woman can find her inner Venus. And what I did is, I don't know if you guys know, have ever seen the painting, The Birth of Venus. It's an old Italian painting by Botticelli. And, and I modeled it after that. It's Venus that comes out of the sea and she's mm -hmm. got the shell and the mm -hmm. long. So I did my piggy like that and she's really cute. Oh, I like it. I, I, I have one bit on my piggy. Okay, I'm ladies excited. and gentlemen, Paula needs another bid on, and shout out to the folks over at the Ronald McDonald House. They do some um, some outstanding work uh, there. So, Paula, talk a little bit about the dating in the LGBTQ. So, you said you don't have anyone, but... I don't, but sometimes but I do have some people that inquire about that, and, you know, ethically... As a business, I can't take them on as clients because I just don't have people to match with them. Um, I would love oh, to okay. expand into that at some point, but it, it's tough. You know, you need to know the community and you need to know people and things like that. But I do work with a lot of other matchmakers that I refer them to, and they, they just do an awesome job. And um, um, they'll, they'll match the LB, LGBTQ people and their, their experience with that and what their needs are. So you don't, because you, like you said, so you don't have the people in your database to help them. Right. So I gotcha. can't, you know, okay. it, it, that's just tough. And, and that would take a whole other way of marketing, too. You know, I launched my company in January, and there are some different things I'd like to expand into and do. And, and you know, at some point, maybe I would like to do something like that. Okay, Stephanie. So, so Paula, Stephanie got married in Vegas. <laughs> I did. And, uh... Let's talk a little bit about dating. So what were dating success stories that got you to Vegas, Stephanie? Oh, well, my dating success story. What was the go-to The go -to one that you knew, okay, this did it? That, um, well, with Rachel, whenever I first met her, it was so corny. Um, we met online, and we um, actually, the first time, I was like, dang, this girl talks a lot. Like, she just <laughs> talks. And, like, I try to get in a word, and she has this thing that she does, and it's cute. And, uh, but when she goes on, she's like, blah, 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 blah. <sighs> anyway, then I, blah, 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 blah. and I was like, but, um, my friend, Sasha, she was like, I think you should try it out. I think you should keep on dating this girl. And it was only after one day. Oh no, after just like talking to her, we hadn't actually went on a date yet. So I was like, cool. You know what? You're right. Um, there's something about her that I do like, so let's do this. So we went to Fredericksburg, we went to this little bitty quiet little coffee shop that was so cute and we just talked and talked and talked and talked but i remember when when she i know um whenever she was walking towards me uh, she was wearing she had a pea coat on she had a dark um she had a black sweater she had on gray leggings um into these cute boots and she was walking towards me and she smiled and i was like <gasps> I'm done. Yeah. And um, it was the same for her. She goes, I just couldn't stop smiling when I saw you. And she goes, the first thing that I said when I saw you was, I'm in trouble. And, <laughs> <laughs> and it was from there. I mean, we just knew because after the coffee shop, we went to the sports bar. And that got crazy. So, and we experienced this weird moment. And it just kind of. Oh, that, that's so awesome. So, how long were you online trying to find out? Because this is, Paula's, what she does is. She does make it so you don't have to go online. How mm -hmm. long were you online trying to find love in all the... A week. Wow. Yeah, so <clears throat> here's my thing. Um, I went... I feel like I know too many people here in Richmond. You know what I mean? I got to look outside of Richmond. <laughs> and um, because here in the, in, the, in the LGBTQ community, my friend has dated this person who I have also dated and then, or I dated that person's ex. And it's just... It's so that's why you're in Fredericksburg? Yes. Yes. Okay. So that's why I, re I found Rachel out there in D.C. <laughs> um, I expanded my search. So, but I would get on and off. I'd get on for a week. And then I, I just room it myself for a month or two. And then I get try a different one. I get on there for about a week or two. And then I'm like, eh. And then I, and I um, move on. Rachel caught me in a good week. And I, um, you know, of course, went from there. And we, we hit it off. And I knew she was the one I wanted to be with. I, um, you know, I think there's just that point where you know. I, I, I was 33 at the time. And I was like, this is... This is my this is my one, um, and she felt the same way. And we didn't ask any questions. Like she was going through a hard time when we first met her. I was there for her. A week after she moved in with me, my mom passed away. She was there for me. So. Do you think that that really kind of put the lock on on the relationship that you guys had gone through something that was real serious? One hundred percent. Because oftentimes when people are dating, 
um, when when stuff hits the fan, it's yeah. it's it's like this is too much for me. I that's can't. That's when do you it. find out who <clears throat> someone really is. Exactly. That's who, that's that's when you find out who that soulmate really is. But it's also when you find out who your true friends are. Yeah. So it's um, that's that's when I knew. Like she, I stuck with her throughout that whole thing you know, that she was going through. And she did not leave my side after my mom passed away. Well, she couldn't because she moved in me. But <laughs> um, <laughs> so she had no choice. It was a small apartment. Um, but yes, 100%, when, it, when there is something tragic that happens in your life and that person sticks with you no matter what, that's, that speaks volumes. Because if, if they can get through that, then all the, other time, all the other tough things that come along are just cake. That's right. It is. That's true. The program is on the mic with Mike. We're here with Paula Pardell, Steph B. Paula, uh, how can people find you? You can find me on my website, bloommatchmaking.com. I'm all over Instagram, big time right now. Um, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, and you can give me a call, 804-205-5063. And Paula's coming to TV in the next two weeks. I am. I got my commercial. Paula has a commercial done, so keep a lookout on her for TV. It turned out so well. She did such a great job. That was your, well, you know, you she had a, a great subject to work with. Ladies and gentlemen, the <laughs> time is 159. The program is on the mic with Mike. I'd like to thank Stephanie uh, for coming in and rolling with us during this segment on the mic with Mike, but we're here with Modern Love with uh, Paula. Paula, any last uh, tips of, of going off into the weekend? Give folks something that they to help them. You know, what I've been hearing a lot lately from clients, from other matchmakers is, you know, we're not getting out as much as we used to, and I think people are in their heads too much. We got it, and I know it's easier said than done, but get out of your head and you know, don't overthink everything. There are some things, of course, you do need to think about, but sometimes we just get in there and we're thinking too much and thinking about the wrong things and getting a bad attitude and try to stay positive, get outside, get in that sunshine. All righty, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back on the other side with Mr. Billy. Well, you guys just... This is WJFN Goochland, WJFN Chester, 100.5 FM, 92.7 FM, and AM820. Breaking news this hour from townhall.com. I'm John Scott. President Trump says he feels he'll win Minnesota this time around. They're angry at the riots, and they know that I stopped them, but I stopped them after it was requested and very late. They should have requested it two weeks earlier. But they're angry at Omar. They're angry at all of this stuff that's going on in Minnesota. And I think it's going to flip for the first time since 1972. Mr. Trump speaking to reporters at the White House prior to departing for Michigan. He's now speaking at a rally in Waterford Township. Rallies also held today in Wisconsin and Minnesota, which Mr. Trump narrowly lost to Hillary Clinton in 2016. Democrat Joe Biden is also campaigning in the Midwest today. Also at townhall.com, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is defending the confirmation of Judge Amy Coney Barrett after Republicans refused to vote on President Obama's Supreme Court nominee during his last year in office. Capitol Hill correspondent Bob Agnew reports. Leader McConnell tells the Salem Radio Network when it comes to judicial nominations. Well, it's not complicated. He says the Constitution makes the Senate something of a co-partner with the president when it comes to filling vacancies. And it's not surprising when you have a Senate of the same party as the president there's a lot more willingness to move and to move quickly. And that's what we did with regard to the um, Ginsburg vacancy. Barrett's confirmation was one of the fastest ever, the closest ever to a presidential election. Bob Agner report. Consumers increasing their spending by 1.4% in September, a slightly better gain than expected. That September gain marked the fifth straight monthly increase in consumer spending, the primary driver of the U.S. economy. And Daylight Saving Time will end this weekend. Don't forget to set your clocks back one hour early Sunday. On Wall Street, the Dow off 353 points. Now the NASDAQ is down 327. More at townhall.com. The following is a true story. I had a lady that was in her mid-70s, and I would sold her timeshare, and that was the lowest I'd ever felt in my life. I knew then that I had to do something to simply not to go to hell for selling timeshare. Chuck McDowell founded Wesley Financial Group to help folks cancel their timeshares permanently. I called her and everybody that I'd sold timeshare to, and I said, this is what I said to you that was a lie, and this is what you need to do to cancel your timeshare. From that point, people started referring 
friends to me to help them cancel the timeshare, and that's how it all started. I fought the world's largest timeshare company in federal court. If I had lost that lawsuit, there would be no one helping people that have been lied to when they bought timeshare. If we take you as a client, we will cancel your timeshare or we'll give your money back. That's what makes us different. Call Wesley Financial Group now for a free information kit. 800-660-1771. That's 800-660-1771. 800-660-1771. The FBI and two federal agencies warned that U.S. hospitals are under a sustained ransomware attack. Cybersecurity experts both in the government and private companies say a number of hospitals have been hit this month and hundreds more are threatened in the attacks which ransomware is installed by Russian-speaking suspects on the hospital computer systems, which can only be unlocked with software keys provided by the thieves once the ransom is paid. Microsoft and others have been countering the takeover efforts. Last month, an attack hobbled all 250 facilities in the universal health systems chain across the country, leading to chaotic conditions directly affecting patient care. Tim McGuire, Washington. Hackers stolen about 2.3 million from the Wisconsin Republican Party's account. It was being used to help reelect President Trump in that key battleground state. Breaking news at townhall.com. The man who attempted to assassinate President Reagan is getting a bigger public profile. John Hinckley can now publicly display his writings, artwork, and music. He's long considered himself to be a musician and an artist. He paints and plays the guitar and has been involved in both pursuits as part of his therapy. Hinckley has anonymously displayed his artwork. But U.S. District Judge Paul L. Friedman ruled that he can now do so under his own name. Hinckley was 25 when he shot Reagan in 1981. The shooting also paralyzed Press Secretary James Brady and injured two others. Hinckley was suffering from acute psychosis and was obsessed with the actress Jodie Foster. Keith Peters reporting. And a prosecutor says the Kennedy cousin Michael Skeagle will not face a second trial in the killing of Martha Moxley. An announcement that came 45 years to the day after the teenager was found bludgeoned to death at her wealthy Connecticut neighborhood. More at townhall.com. I'm John Scott. Hi, I'm Tom Childry, the credit card guy with Beyond. I believe it should not be confusing or expensive for your business to accept credit cards. As a social enterprise business advocate, my mission gets you paid faster with fair rates, helping your business grow. We can be contacted at area code 804-503-8472, 804-503-8472, or at getbeyond.com. Again, I'm Tom Childry, the credit card guy. Quick, easy collect. We make it easier than you expect. The all-new WJFN has Virginia's biggest footprint. So what's that really mean? It means you get more on the mic with Mike everywhere you go. Because now Virginia's premier business program on the mic with Mike is two hours of action-packed business and social enterprise information. So join me as this cutting-edge show uplifts the community and showcases RVA in a different way. On the Mic with Mike with Mike King Biz RVA, weekdays at 1 on WJFN. I enjoy listening to On the Mic with Mike every day at 1 p.m. Tune into On the Mic with Mike Election Day Special on WJFN. This is You Know Who, and that day you will hear spirited talk about if moving trucks will be needed to move my stuff. By the way, you know this message is sponsored by Mike King Biz. Welcome back to a Friday version of On the Mic with Mike. It is the leading business enterprise show in, in the area. We're on WJFN Radio 100.5, 92.7, 820 AM. It's the place where the, the game-changers come to talk. So now we have with us, we have Stephanie, Steph B is still here, rocking and rolling with us. We have Paula Pardell still in the house. But next up, we, it is my honor to talk to Mr. Billy. Mr. Billy, welcome to the program, sir. 
What's going on, Mike? How you doing? I'm doing good. So now, this this is a big budget radio program here, and we have a crack staff, and everyone has, we have, you know, done research, and no one has ever met a black man librarian before, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, we make up barely 1% of the field, so it's not surprising. <laughs> okay, so let me ask you, so before we get to your story, were you the kid who loved books and all of a sudden you became you became the, uh, the librarian? So it was kind of um, interesting. Like, obviously, I loved reading. Um, it was just always about like being engaged into what I wanted to read about. I was obviously a big sports basketball junkie, uh, the avid video game player. So my mother and I was a big hip hop fan. So my mother would order those types of magazines, but the way I never had aspirations of becoming a librarian. So I, I had a unique journey to become where I'm at now. Okay. So give folks a little bit. So we have, I couldn't just do this by myself. This interview was, was big. I got these ladies here, so we all have questions. So at least start us on the journey that one day ends up with you saying, hey, I want to be a librarian. So um, initially, I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina. So uh, my mother uh, graduated from Winston-Salem State, uh, HBCU. Shout my out dad to HBCUs. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So um, my dad's a sheriff, retired sheriff from Charlotte, North Carolina. So, you know, initially when I graduated high school in 2002, I decided to enroll into Winston-Salem State and try to pursue a career in nursing. So, um, just unfortunately, I just wasn't focused. I was focused on the girls and all that stuff and flunked out. So my dad said, you need some structure. <laughs> so I enlisted into the Air Force. So um, I listened to the Air Force, and you know, once again, I was an EMT, so I was trying to follow in the footsteps of my mother. I'm trying to be a nurse. So fast forward, I get out of the Air Force, and I'm living in Atlanta, and I'm 23 around that time, and my mom asked me, were you serious about finishing school? And I was like, yeah. So I enrolled at Lincoln University in Missouri. That was an HBCU in so Missouri. So wait a second. Say, now, I went to the real Lincoln. Now, you know, I understand. Oh, no. Oh, I went to the no, real Lincoln, the, the first HBCU. <laughs> so you went to the oh, one, no. you know, who just kind of took our name. But that's right, sir. Go, <laughs> go, go ahead. You can, you can continue on with the story out in Missouri. <laughs> one, of my, uh, one of my homeboys, he graduated from, you know, the other Lincoln, you know. So he's a librarian, too. So it's funny because uh, my major was nursing. And midway through my undergrad, one of my homeboys was like, you know, I'm about to do this. What you about to do? And I'm like, I'm about to be a li uh, I'm about to be a nurse. He said he's going to be a librarian. Now, the same response I gave him is what people ask me. They say, "What the hell do a librarian do?" That you know, so, I was getting to that. <laughs> so when I got exposed to the field of librarianship, I did not know how big this field was. So every field has a librarian. I'm talking about Microsoft, Disney, hospitals, law firms. Anything with information has a librarian. So Didn't know once that. I got exposed to that, yeah, and then I found out that, you know, black male librarians make a pretty good living. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I, you, know, it's all, you know, we like money. So I'm like, well, let me, you know, I was, it changed my whole perspective on things. So I ended up changing my major from nursing and then I'm getting my bachelor's degree in biology because I took all these science classes with a minor in library science. So I took an internship, and then it changed my life because I didn't know. Most people don't know you have to have a master's degree in library science to become a librarian. Mm. So I graduated in 2014. You know, I went back to school at 25, got my bachelor's degree at 29, moved back to North Carolina at um, North Carolina Central University, another HBCU, where I got my master's in library science. Now, the kicker is, so I ended up getting my master's at 31. Never in a million years I would think I would be a librarian, but I ended up finding that I found my passion in kids. Okay. Because I always, I'm an entertainer, so I felt there was a need, and my story time at my library started taking off. Like, I mean, I work, I live in uh, Miami. I live in, I work for Broward County. Uh, libraries. We, and we've seen the videos. They're, they're very entertaining. <laughs> they're thank very you, man. Entertaining. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. So each session at 10 and 11 o'clock was ranging, Mike, from 50 to 150 people each session. So 
two years ago, I was telling some of my friends and my dad, and I was like, ain't nobody doing a kid show in the African-American and Hispanic community. Mm. And I haven't seen nothing like that since Reading Rainbow, okay. perhaps. Or, you know, so I said, you know, I'm going to do this. So two years ago, I started Three King Visions, and, you know, it, it's been a beautiful journey as far as trying to help kids develop the lifelong love of reading. And, you know, it, it's similar to, I don't know, whoever's listening, it's very similar to a Blues Clues and Reading Rainbow mixed together, but I kind of put my own little style and spin to it. You know, I saw a lot of hip-hop references for the adults because you got to entertain the adults as well. So, um... The reception's been dope, man. Um, Three Key Vision's just been like, it's just my lifestyle, just how I am as Mr. Billy, or if you know me personally as AJ, man. So it's been beautiful. So you're, you're known as Mr. Billy. And uh, I give a shout-out real quick to Sandra Wilson because she's out there singing your praises. and that's Oh, how, man. So that's I how I, I got you. So talk a little bit about Three Kings Vision and the videos and story time. Yes. So uh, for those that are listening, um, my YouTube channel is Three King Visions, the number three, K-I-N-G-V-I-S-O-N-S, Three King Visions, all one word. Um, we represent and influence our, our young kings and queens to develop the lifelong love of reading. Um, and I want to do it through story time. So if you're, people are listening, if you're not have been exposed to story time, if you've seen, you know, probably some other librarians or other people do a story time, my story time is a lot different. Yes, I'm it is. I'm bringing a lot of... I'm bringing that vibrant energy. I'm bringing that enthusiasm. And I, my whole point is to create engagement. Like, if you don't have these kids engaged and the parents, this is, you know, this is, this is what it's all about. So what I do is create a kids show where I read a story, and I do sing-alongs, I do finger plays, spellboard activities, and I got a co-star. Uh, called Busy to Be, and Busy so, to Be is is definitely the star of the show. <laughs> oh yeah, hands down, hands down, hands down. And he's a little mischievous, but there's always a message in with the content in the uh, the show. We got over 38 videos. I'm about to release like a a whole bunch of episodes in the next coming weeks. It's been crazy, uh, Mike, because all like all the local black children's authors every week. I'm getting books left and right, so. I got plenty of work to do, but, um, you know, we're just getting started. Okay, so we you got to give our listeners some of Mr. Billy and story time. Because I've been telling people, but they, they got to hear it from Mr. Billy now. Give us a little bit about uh, Mr. Billy and story time. See, Mr. Billy and story time is just, it's, it's me times 100, but it's actually me, you know, right now. So one of my favorite, you know, sayings is stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. So, you know, I'm popping my trunk. I'm on my lunch break at work. So, you know, I might as well go ahead and read a story right now. Well, thank I, I'm full of a story. But... So, I got a story right here called Superhero Mom by Joe Berger and Timothy Nabby. Uh-oh, let's see. All oh, the moms are unique women. But sometimes you'll come upon one with a special something like my superhero mom she gets up every morning with a superhero leap though sometimes even superheroes want to a bed or sleep don't we like going to sleep mr mike yeah i'm so here she for this so many things at once did she do from here to there mending Mixing, making, she's making some pancakes, y'all. You know, whipping in the kitchen like it's stir fry. Oh, taming the tables in my hair. So that's a little sample of my story time. So you know. <laughs> All right. Okay, Mr. Billy, and that you know what that 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 is excellent. I'm I telling you, I'm, I can't even stop smiling. I was like, from I the jump, I was like, "This is amazing." So, <laughs> so when when you roll into the library and and the library didn't know what they were getting, what was that like when they realized, okay, this one's a little different than everybody else who's been here before? And, and it was funny. So when I first started doing my story time, and when I moved here to Broward County, this is my second librarian job. And I'm the assistant manager at Broward County Library. So, first of all, I come in a room with all the, you know, these mothers 
It was a lot of kids, and they're used to another storyteller. But then I come in. I don't even look like a librarian. Like, no. you know, I'm coming in with some, with some Jordans on. <laughs> I got a graphic T-shirt. That is very accurate. So you know, <laughs> the, the look is different. So I don't look like the stereotypical librarian. But once they hear it, one of my coworkers, when I first started working, he said, man, it sounded like an earthquake. <laughs> because as soon as you come in that library, you hear that energy. Then you have adults in other library programs within our library looking through the window to see what's going on, and they're being entertained. Because I tell people, uh, children are just like adults. They got short attention spans. So you have to grasp them right away. And it's it just been a natural thing because this is how I am anyway. Like, I'm, I'm very energetic, goofy, but this is how I am just as a person. And I feel like when you put that positive energy out there, it's so infectious, Mike. So can you tell us how you developed Mr. Billy? And But you said Mr. Billy is you just, you know, going at a hundred. Uh, can you talk a little bit about like how you develop the whole three kings, and that and to come up with Busy B? Because the, Billy, the Busy B is, is pretty cool, and, and talk a little bit about the animation that you you use with it. Right. So um, I started working with a videographer, uh, Davion. Um, you can follow him on on Instagram. I tag him in a lot of my videos. So when I was coming up with this kid show, I was like, okay, you know, most kid shows I watch. They always had a co-star. And I was inspired heavily by the Blues Clues and the Reading Rainbows. But I always felt like, you know what I'm saying, I need to add a more entertaining element to it. So with me doing my regular story times, I figured, you know, let me throw in a song or two. I do an opening song, a closing song. So wait, 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 wait. Hold up, hold up, hold up, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, you do oh. a, now, do you need music for the opening song? Or okay. can you just come no. off the top? I'll come off the top. I'll do acapella songs. Um, it's all about rhythm. The kids are learning when they're not even realizing. You're talking about phonological awareness as far as learning how to. Uh, we we all, we, you know, we got that look on our face like, what word did he just use? I know. I was like, phonological. <laughs> that is, uh, that's a word. That's a librarian coming out. Hey, hey, that's the SAT word. Right? That is the SAT word. That really is. I was like, how that's many the, syllables are in there? Exactly. That's the word. That, you know, that's what mom and daddy y'all paid for uh-huh. with that word. Right. It's funny because when I was doing my story times and people was trying to train me how to do it, I'm not the type of person to be like, if you're happy and you know, cla-. that's not me. So I will do, I will flip it and be like, with my little hands, I go clap, clap, clap. With my little feet, I go tap, tap, tap. I, I, I do that. I put my own spin to it. Oh. Um, if you watch a lot of these, I'm, I'm a big hip-hop fan. Like I, like, I would incorporate Busy into a lot of my hip-hop references. So when the parent is watching it with their child, I got Busy B getting fresh and getting, getting his drip on. And I'll be like, Busy got that drip for sale. Only drip? the adult's going to catch it. So wait a second, you know, Mr. Billy, Mr. Billy. Uh, well, you know, this is an older demo right here. Now, I'm real old. I, I'm, I'm straight okay. up real old. But now we got Steph B. Uh, she just wanted to know exactly, uh, drip. Yeah, what, you... like, what, okay. <laughs> so you said uh-huh. Mr. B is dripping, and I'm like, is he dripping honey? Is he dripping drop beats? Mm-hmm. What is he? He's he dripping that. He dripping that swagger. Okay. You know, that coolness. No, you know, being fresh. You okay, know? so he, he came through dripping to the world. So he came through dripping, but in a B style. He be coming through dripping. Okay, look, my got bu- it. Look, busy the B got a hairline. He got a like it's fresher than mine. It's not a hairline. Mine. It's got a nice fade to it. <laughs> oh Edge yeah, man, he go to barbershop every week. Oh, and in the good barbershop, it's like the barbershop on the corner that everybody knows next to the um, the really good, um, you know, the, station with look, with the not, the, not the military barbershop. Oh no, that's nah, not. A good nah, one. nah, 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 nah. He, he ain't getting no fade. No, that's not a fade. Up. That's just a buzz cut with a with a with a, uh, a cut <laughs> like a literal cut, and they got a nick. No. Okay. All right, ladies no. and gentlemen, the time is two twenty one. <laughs> We're on here with Mr. Billy of three three King Vision. Uh uh we gotta go away and you know, we gotta get this back on, on track here. Uh we have to pay some <laughs> bills. Uh Mr. Billy, can you hold on for a moment for us? No problem. All no right, problem. we'll be back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we gotta go away. Make sure you take a listen to their sponsors. Uh Tom Children, the credit card guy. Uh, I'd like to thank you for listening. Thanks, we'll be back on the other side.
Hi, I'm Tom Childry, the credit card guy with Beyond. I believe it should not be confusing or expensive for your business to accept credit cards. As a social enterprise business advocate, my mission gets you paid faster with fair rates, helping your business grow. We can be contacted at area code 804-503-8472, 804-503-8472, or at getbeyond.com. Again, I'm Tom Childry, the credit card guy. Quick, easy collect. We make it easier than you expect. Are you single and looking for love? Bloom matchmaking is the modern way to find love. Bloom will take the stress out of dating. Bloom matchmaking is a safe, effective alternative to those dating apps. Everyone is vetted and background checked. Your privacy is very important to us. All matches are hand-picked just for you. Check us out at bloommatchmaking.com or give us a call at 804-403-8091. Bloom Matchmaking, where love grows. Hi, Chef Michelle here of Mama Michelle's Cafe, home of the Soul Rolls, located at 10811 Hall Street Road. Give us a call at 804-912-1644 or order online at mamashelves.com. Ask about our off-site catering options as well as our online ordering through Grubhub, Uber Eats, and DoorDash. Follow us on all social media at Mama Michelle's Cafe. That's Mama Michelle's, Soul South of the James. Mention Mike on the mic and get a free dessert on us. Special rules apply. On the mic with Mike, the best business radio program in the game. <laughs> Tune into On the Mic with Mike, a lecture day special on WJFN. This is You Know Who, and that day you will hear spirited talk about if moving trucks will be needed to move my stuff. By the way, you know this message is sponsored by Mike King Biz. Welcome back to On the Mic with Mike. It is the premier daily business enterprise show in the Richmond area. I'm your host, Mike King. Uh, today is Friday. We had uh, Modern Law with Paula Pardell. Uh, with me right now, uh, rolling along, is uh, Steph B. Uh, veterans. Okay, so wait a second. So it's uh, Virginia Pride. Oh, Lord. Veterans. Yeah, Virginia Pride, Minority Veterans of America. Um, and yeah, that's where I'm at right now. Alrighty. Yeah. And we're talking to Mr. Billy of Three King Visions. Mr. Billy, thanks for holding on, sir. Appreciate it. No problem. And how can people find you once again? Oh, please uh, follow me on Instagram at Three King Visions on on Instagram. But please subscribe to the YouTube channel Three King Visions on YouTube. We're trying to spread the word. I think it's, it's so many messages that I'm sending out. I mean. We are in a time where there's too much negativity on the black man, and I feel like we need to promote a lot more positivity that we can inspire our kids to be more than an athlete or a rapper. And I, I just want to send those positive vibes out. So please support. Subscribe on YouTube. Follow me on Instagram. Um, I'm on Facebook as well, but I've been pushing those two platforms. So just please support. Uh, support. If you know anybody that has any children's books, uh, please send them my way. Show me a DM. And hold up. And sorry to even like interrupt the flow. Everyone, please go vote. Please mm -hmm. go yes. Vote. Now you just heard my uh, promo. So we, you yes, know, just do the right thing. Go out there, and then wherever. And so now, Mr. Billy, you down in Florida? Come on, man. Y'all yeah. oh, yeah. got, got to do the right thing down there. Hold your, you know, get the folks holding it down and. Oh, man. This look, is a conservative man, station, so, you know, and I always say, you know, they have their, their other 22 hours to say what they're going to say. <laughs> but during these two hours, we are here <laughs> talking <laughs> about, let's just go ahead and we're going to take COVID seriously. We're going to take care of Absolutely. each other. We're going to provide yeah. uplifting conversation. So uh, yeah. how do you put together the, the when you put together the story times? 
Talk a little mm -hmm. bit about how you come up with, with the fun stuff that you do. So I typically uh, look at the book, I'm on the feature, and I kind of will base a theme around that. Or I am a big battle rap fan, so uh, it's real theatrical. So I kind of watch a lot of that, and then just I get ideas. Uh, you know, I'm a creator. I'm, I'm walking outside uh, from the library. But um, I get a lot of ideas. I put it in my memo, my phone, but I typically base it off of the title of the book, the theme. For instance, if it was a book about superheroes, um, Martellius, um, Mar Martellius Bennett, the NFL player, he had a book called Dear Black Boy. Yeah. And okay. uh, he found me through Instagram and sent me a copy of his book. And, like, for Black History Month, I featured that book. And I had uh, the theme as far as influencing our young readers to be great in life, no matter if you're an athlete, if you want to be an accountant or a lawyer. And I, throughout that whole episode, I will obviously go for my song, but now I'll read the story, but also have a theme to, you know, get the kids engaged. Sometimes I go on tre treasure hunts. I've done episodes at the zoo. I've done okay. episodes at Chuck E. Cheese, you know. So it just depends on the content. Uh, the flow of the book, and just, you know, me just living, I'm always inspired by everything. So I'm like, you can, it's always all about continuous learning. Well, I'm telling and you, you know, we're going to give you a shout out because what you're doing is is outstanding. <laughs> you know, we our kids Thank need you. to, you know, need to learn more and be engaged in reading because when you, you know, the whole reading concept opens the whole world up to you and the way you're giving them the content is outstanding so the time is 229 we have about a minute to go can mr billy just send us off and you know sign off uh to the program and you know just just give it to us as mr billy well this is mr billy creator of three king visions on on the mic with mike please support me at three king visions on youtube and instagram thank you for having me and y'all know it's all about the kids that's, there you go. I like, like Mr. Billy. I know some stuff likes you. So you got some followers here. You're a friend of the program. Make sure you come back then. We'll talk to you later. Absolutely. Thanks, Thank now. you. All right. Take care. Hi, I'm Bye -bye. Kim Gray, a member of Richmond City Council. I'm running for mayor of Richmond. I'm the only candidate running for mayor with the integrity and experience necessary to lead us through this time of uncertainty. Like you, I am fully vested in this great city that I love. I'm saddened by the vandalism and lawlessness that has ravished our great city, the vulgar graffiti that makes it impossible to take my children downtown, and the lack of coherent leadership to deal with our issues on any level. Our high school dropout rate is a staggering 30%. This is unacceptable. As your mayor, I pledge to restore peace and clean up Richmond so we can be proud of our downtown, get our businesses back open, and help our children succeed in school. I love Richmond. It's not a stepping stone for me to another office. Like you, this is my home, and together we'll make it once again the greatest city in America. I ask for your vote. I'm Kim Gray, candidate for mayor, and I paid for an office this message. TGIF, I'm Kiara Johnson with your with your WJFN 100.5 FM weather report brought to you by Dominion Energy. Richmond, cloudy skies early, followed by partial clearing, high 58 today for your tonight. Clear to partly cloudy, low around 40. Charlottesville. Sun and clouds mixed, high 61 for your Friday. Tonight, partly cloudy, low 37. Fredericksburg. Cloudy skies this morning will become partly cloudy this afternoon, high 56. For your tonight, partly cloudy skies and a low 38. Enjoy your weekend. This has been your WJFN 100.5 FM weather. Please visit DominionEnergy.com. I enjoy listening to On the Mic with Mike every day at 1 p.m. Tune into On the Mic with Mike Election Day Special on WJFN. This is You Know Who, and that day you will hear spirited talk about if moving trucks will be needed to move my stuff. By the way, you know this message is sponsored by Mike King Biz.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the best business program in the RVA area. On the mic with Mike, I'm your host, Mike King, and I appreciate you being here with us. Uh, the views expressed here are mine. I have no connection to the station. I don't work for the station. My program just airs here on a daily basis, and I'm appreciative of that. Uh, riding with me along today with is uh, Steph B. She's here talking. We'd like to thank Mr. Billy of Three King Visions. Mr. Billy was just uh, entertaining us as a librarian, talking about how he makes it entertaining for the kids. Next up, we have Shelby Beck, uh, Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate Base Camp, and they have an outstanding uh, an event that they're doing, a, a winter coat drive for uh, people in need in the area. So, Shelby, welcome to the program. Thank you. All righty. The word that you guys have, you guys are doing something big. Talk a little bit about Better Homes and Garden, about Base Camp, and then how you got involved and how folks can come on board to help with the drive. Okay. So Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate Base Camp is an agency in the area. We have two offices, one in Midlow and one in Richmond, right off of Brooks Road. Um, we have about 67 agents, and we're truly passionate about community. We try to get involved in the community and really be able to do outreach. Um, that's actually a part of our goals um, as a company as well. So earlier when COVID started, we worked with the Chesterfield County Food Bank and did a really big drive. And then we're like, okay, it's getting cold. What can we do now? Um, so we are doing our winter coat drive. It started on Monday, and it is going to wrap up on Saturday, November 7th. So we've got about a week left of it, um, and really just helping collect coats for the Coats for Kids program. I'm not sure if you know what maybe the Coats for Kids program is. Can I explain a little bit about that? The floor is yours, ma'am. You can say the whole thing. That's why <laughs> That's why we brought you on because this is a microphone and a megaphone. So <laughs> let's go for it. All right. So the Coats for Kids program is actually ran by Puritan Cleaners. And it started off as gathering coats for children in need. Uh, they really worked very closely with the schools, uh, but unfortunately this year with COVID, that has been a downside. You know, they can't do the drives at the schools. They can't be there and be able to collect for these children, okay. but the need is still very great in our area. Um, so we wanted to really be able to help them and be another spot where people can donate those coats. So what they'll do is they collect the coats. Like I said, they love the kids' coats because we know kids grow way too fast. <laughs> um, but at any size is great. But they collect them, they mend every single coat, and then they also dry clean every single coat. Oh. So the families that are getting these coats, they're going to be fixed, they're going to be cleaned. You know, so it's like getting a brand new coat. Um, which is just amazing to me that we're able to help provide that service. So in the past, I would remember that they were all, so the cleaners, they were all types of drop-off places. Where do people drop the coats off now these days? So Puritan is still collecting them at their offices. Okay. So that is an option. Um, but we are also providing our offices as a drop-off point as well. So um, we have an office in Midlothian. It's right on Lake Arbor Drive, which is kind of close to Brander Mill area. And then we have a location at 5011 Brook Road, which is kind of right across where the old Azalea Mall used to be. Okay. Um, we're located right there as well in the city. Can you talk, so I, I know you guys are really in tune with the community. Talk a little bit about what it is, because I see your agents out and about. Talk a little bit about community involvement and uh, base camp. Um, so we try to get involved the most we can. I mean, like I said, we have done the food bank in the past. That's actually a passion of one of our agents. Um, and she's done a lot of work with that. So she's involved with that. And we wanted to kind of go in and jump on board with that as well. Kind of another side way that we are helping out the community right now. When COVID hit, we know a lot of businesses. I know a lot of my friends in the service industry got hit really hard. Yes. I think everyone knows somebody that got affected, you know? So we were like, how can we help? 
how can we in a small way help get some business going back into these restaurants and small businesses so our broker decided to do what he calls his gift card contest so every week we go into a small locally owned business and buy a hundred dollars in gift cards and we give those out to people in the community so it's four twenty five dollar gift cards to a small business every week and we are on our 30th week of doing this Wow. Um, wow. Just as a small, you know, like, it's just hoping to create business to those local businesses because we know everybody's struggling, you know, like, that's putting money in a server's pocket, that's putting money in, you know, a small business owner's pocket. So that's just another way that we're currently helping our community. So let folks know how they can find out more information about the, uh, co- the clothing, the coat drive. Of course, of course. So for the winter coat drive, um, we have everything posted on our Facebook page, which if you're on Facebook, you can find us at Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate Base Camp. Um, All the information is located there and also on our Instagram page as well. Um, But if anyone ever wants to give me a call, I would love to walk them through the process or set up um, a time where they can drop off their coats. And my phone number is 804-639-9001. I mean, during these times, I mean, we really are at a a crazy time in history. And, you know, the community does take care of each other. But right now, it's even more... It's even more of a time to really help out because, and folks, let, let's give good stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, let's not mm-hmm. go get the, you know, now I'm old as I don't know what. Let, don't go pulling <laughs> out the, uh, you know, the, the maxi from 1977, <laughs> you know, or that big furry one that, that's not in style or the one who has more miles on it. People like to get things that are good, and even though, you know, Puritan does the, the mending, let's not try and give them too much to to worry about <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's i mean it's great it's great that they do take the time to mend that but you know we'll always take new or used <laughs> that is true let's let's whatever we can do and you know i appreciate exactly. you guys uh you know helping out base camp I'd like to give you guys a shout out uh if there's ever anything that you guys else are doing please let us know here uh one last time let people know how they can find you to to support it All right, so just check out our Facebook page, uh, Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate Base Camp. We've got some videos on there and some flyers for our winter coat drive, and we're also on Instagram as well, trying to get it out there as much as we can. So any support we'll take. (laughs) And since you guys are real estate agents, go ahead and do the commercial for Base Camp, why people want to use you. (laughs) Why people... We are truly, we are locals. We are not just your realtors. We are truly your neighbors. And we are passionate about our community and giving back. Um, we're considered that true lifestyle brand. So we're here from the first sale until the last. There you go. She, I like she it. brought it to the point. <laughs> I like All righty, Shelby, we'd like to thank you for coming on. <laughs> if you have anything else, please make, you know, contact us and, and keep us informed uh, about how the thing is going. And we'd like to have you come back on uh, before it ends. That way we can have another push for you. That would be great. All righty, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to thank Shelby for coming on, and we'll be back after these breaks. Hi everyone, it's Pavi Leitner, the CEO and founder of Finlit and your family certified financial educator dedicated to the financial success of you and your family. Are you not sure where to start with your finances or are you looking to sign your middle schooler up for our virtual camp? Book us at www.finlitva.com. That is www.fin L-I-T-V-A dot com. Finlit is creating a money conscious community.
Are you experiencing difficulties with paying your mortgage or bringing your mortgage current? If so, we can help. Give Neighborhood Home and Assistance a call at 1-800-441-6872 or text 757-951-3048 for an immediate response. We have over 10 years of mortgage experience working with some of the largest mortgage corporations in America. For more information, visit NeighborhoodHomeAssistance.com to schedule your free over-the-phone consultation. Remember, time is one thing we can't get back, and your home is your investment. Act fast. Dessert Diva RVA. Specialty Boutique with specialty products. Providing custom experiences. Our Dessert Boutique is open on the weekends. Every dessert made from scratch. We also offer date nights and event decor. Dessert Diva RVA. The official home of Party in a Box. Welcome to the SBA Weekly Business Tip. I'm Martin Short with the U.S. Small Business Administration, Virginia Richmond District Office. There are primarily four ways to fund your business. One way is crowdfunding. Crowdfunding raises funds for many people. Crowdfunders aren't technically investors because they don't receive a shared ownership in the business. Crowdfunding is popular because it's a very low risk for business owners. Crowdfunding platforms are different. Read the fine print and understand all the obligations. To learn more, visit us at sba.gov slash VA. We're here to help you start, grow, expand, or recover. Would you like to capture a special life moment? Do you need a photographer with the ability to make that moment live on forever using COVID-19 guidelines? Please contact Pure Essence Photography today. We specialize in weddings, family events, and professional headshots. Please contact us today to get the special on the mic with Mike discount. We can be reached at 804-926-8101 or by visiting us at pureessencecaptured.com. My name is Isabella and you're listening to my King Biz Hubby. That's my scam. Welcome back to On the Mic with Mike. It is the premier business enterprise show in the area. Mike King here, he's Steph B. Rock, uh, rocking and rolling with us. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a little bit funny. So we just had uh, Shelby on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Shelby back from base camp. Yes, yes. And go ahead. Yeah, so I was like, Shelby Beck, Shelby Beck, Shelby Beck. Sh- 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 sh. I was like, why does that name sound so familiar? And I was like, her voice sounds familiar too. Then I realized that Shelby and I actually went to high school together at LC <laughs> Bird, and we actually hung out with the same friends. Like, um, we had like Jennifer Johnson, and we had uh, a couple of these guys. I remember there was a lot of, um, that was when cool kids had the, the cool cars, and we would go to Wendy's afterwards and sit in the parking lot. And, and so you said Shelby had a really cool car. She did. I thought she did. Like, I, I remember she had a cooler car, and I remember looking at it like, man, I wish I was Shelby. Had that cool <laughs> car. And it was so weird. Um, so, Shelby, if you're still listening, hey, it's Steph Brown, um, now known as Stephanie um, Merlot. But, yes, hello. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's what this program does. We just, you know, we just bring folks back together, you know, long-lost friends, you know, <laughs> people went to high school with. That's what we do. We're just regular public servants. Oh, by the way, so for folks who are looking on Facebook, I just just have to give a shout out to uh, my friends over at Launch Trampoline Park. So I'm, I'm rocking their gear here. Uh, Launch Trampoline Park. They're going to be in next week. Uh, talk a little bit about what they do. They have a really cool uh, park down on uh, Hull Street Road. They're going through some tough times like everyone is. So they take every precaution as far as cleanliness and COVID worthy stuff. So if you ever get a chance, uh, make sure you check them out when everything is lifted. They really go above and beyond. Plus they're small business owners and they're really good friends. Uh, You'll be hearing their advertisement on the radio and we'll be having some passes. Uh, Steph is still here with us. On Mike with Mike, we're here daily with you from 1 to 3 p.m. every day. WJFN Radio 100.5, 92.7, 8.20 a.m. It's the place where the game changers come to to talk. Today we're talking with... uh, with Steph. So let's go back to the whole Juneteenth. And this is like a lifetime ago we were having this conversation. Mm-hmm. When Donald Trump had said that he really made Juneteenth famous. <laughs> I can't. You're laughing. Al thought it was funny. 
There were a lot of people from up north who had never heard of that, mm -hmm. and I'm talking until uh, the early 2000s, maybe, and I had no clue what it was. Yeah. So it was like information really moved slowly yeah. in those days. Yeah, and it's so funny because, you know, it's not like Juneteenth just happened. This was literally in 18 you know, 65, 1860, well, 1866, because it was a year after the Civil War. So, but yes, information definitely does, um, you know, it, it gets, it, it definitely travels slowly. But when, when Trump said that, he was like, you know, I um, introduced, you know, I made everybody knew about Juneteenth. Millions and millions of people. Well, I'm going to raise my hand. Yeah. Because, yeah. And I think it was probably because coming from up north, mm -hmm. there were things that, that, that you read and you learn what the school books are teaching you exactly. and the curriculum. Exactly. And the curriculum didn't include Juneteenth. It didn't. And we didn't have information at our fingertips now mm -hmm. to ask every question that was ever known to man. Right. Whether the answer is true or not. Mm -hmm. You can ask the question. And so when I thought about Juneteenth, and it was funny that you had said that it was your, with your great-grandfather four times. Yeah removed and then i started thinking that we had that conversation at the american civil war museum and then i see it popping up in the news yeah yeah so um yeah 100 percent to go back to what you're saying it, the curriculum does not require um some things to be talked about and so in texas however juneteenth is, is something that we s discuss a, a little bit i mean it's known enough where th there are parades and all that but um to your point yes curriculums do not focus on that just like they didn't focus on tulsa you know the, uh, mm -hmm. the massacre in tulsa oklahoma no one knew I, I didn't even know about that until i watched the watchmen and then i started googling it and i was like oh my god why didn't i not know about this and i felt so ashamed because i love history especially black history so i was i was like what in the actual bleep am i missing here what else are we missing that we don't know about and um but yeah you're right um forbes forbes magazine covered it the story about um juneteenth um and my grandfather uh being one of those uh who, who was the founder of it yeah so when you know there's all types of histories and battles that that get news and if you're not in that area mm -hmm. or you're not in that demo you might hear a little bit of something and then you you know you just get it you don't you don't understand i didn't know what juneteenth was you know down here i noticed and realized that the civil war and history is a lot more tangible than it is up north right you don't get i mean there's there. You see things. There, I've come from Philadelphia, the Betsy Ross House. Okay, the Liberty Bell. But that's not a part of your life that's wrapped up when you're talking about the market down on 17th Street or you're talking about you know, the monuments that are, that are there that are, you know, they're, they're just a blatant reminder. And now that you ride down the street, they're not there anymore. And there are people who are thinking they should have come down. And there are people who think that they shouldn't come down. And everyone in between. But if you don't live in an area where that's part of it, a lot of times you, you miss out on it. Mm -hmm. when the, uh, what's the place in New York where it was the gay and lesbian, the, was it Stonewall? Yeah, Stonewall Inn. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now here, here's a quick thing. We used to hang out down the street. So my wife was from Manhattan, and mm -hmm. we used to live there, and we lived on Staten Island. We used to go to this restaurant, right, maybe five or six doors from there called Down the Hatch. Uh-huh. And oh, okay, okay. not realizing that how much a part of history that that place was. And you had to be in that demo mm -hmm. or that understanding to realize that this place is historic. Yeah, it's so historic. I mean, that's pretty much where having pride, pride parades was born. You know, it all started with a riot. It started with a riot. It started with someone saying, no more. This is, I'm done. And I'm tired of it. And it was because of police brutality. And so here we are full circle. Back it, with br police brutality. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about the the riots uprising whatever you want to call it some of the how do you what position do you think that the police are put in knowing that sometimes they real they have to be police mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. but there are also people underneath those shields and they're conflicted. That is such a good question. I, every time I see a police officer, <laughs> this sounds so horrible, but every time I see a police officer now pulling next to me, I just look at them <laughs> and I'm just like, mm -hmm. Come on, dude. yeah, no. yeah, exactly. But, and it sucks because I know not every police officer is a bad cop. Right. Um, but at the same, here's my thought. This is my thought. I feel that um, if you don't, police up after your friends who are bad cops what does that make you like you have to if you are noticing somebody is falling behind or somebody is not um you know they're not adhering to these specific standards or their own guidelines then you need to do something don't let like like brianna taylor why did why is it okay for this guy to still be on the force when he has had all these um all of these things against him and he was under investigation and he he has all these counts and now he's shooting outside of her window yeah. one of the things that i could never and i don't understand what this and both of us being in the military military police police your own mm -hmm. and just with the sheer fact of the idea that you may get in trouble stops gi from doing a lot of things gi's do all kind of crazy things yes yes but shooting first and asking questions later is not one of them. 100%. Why can we, in a short basic training, something, and they've taken everybody from all different walks of life, every race, creed, color, economic, from Alaska to Florida. Mm -hmm. They're taking people from big cities to the mountains of West Virginia. Yeah. And in four to six weeks, put in them. Don't shoot first and ask questions, but we can't do that with a police department. Exactly. I literally was having this conversation with my brother before before I got here, because um, my brother is former infantry, Marine infantry, and you know we are taught, and especially him, are taught to assess a situation before you actually act upon it. So. I am assessing my immediate threats. I am looking, I am paying attention, I am noticing who's over here, what does he have in his hand, what is his intent. You should be able to pick up on these. You should not have this instinct to just shoot because you feel that you are uh, like that person is a threat and if that's your natural instinct, man, you really need to take a step back because and what are you being trained for? Because like you said, like in basic training, we're going through, we're climbing through dirt. We're, we're doing, um, we're learning how to shoot. We're learning how to kill. Like, what is it? Like, blood makes a green grass grow, Joel, yes. Sergeant. And so you are learning these tools and, um, and how to apply them and when to apply them. But so why is that so hard to implement in, in a, in a police? But, but here's the, another point. Police officers should not be militant. True. And so now we have that where, um, why are you guys acting as if you are in the military? But even in the military, here we go, we don't actually do that. But for some reason, they feel like it's okay. I don't, I don't understand it. There's uh, one of the last one movies that I had seen that really, I guess, exemplified that was Lone Survivor. Mm, that's such a good movie. They made the choice not to do the wrong thing. Right. And right. in the end, it got them. Right. Because the fear of we can't do something against the law mm -hmm. ends up getting all of them killed except for a lone survivor. Right. Because they're saying the system will not allow. It is putting us not to do that right there. Yeah. When even in our instinct to survive, mm -hmm. we know, but we won't do it anymore. Uh, do you think that people need to, police need to live in the community to understand oh, 100%. the people? 100%. You have people who, you know, police officers who are living in a, a really nice gated community suburb, and then they place them in a more urban environment they're not familiar with, you know, and, and they are um, here thinking that everybody is a threat. And you know, I had this conversation with somebody and I said, if you saw, if you saw three black men on the, on the corner and they're dressed in urban clothes, what would you think? And they're like, well, I think they're up to no good. I'm like, why? Well, why are they standing in a group together? What are they doing at the, at the corner? I'm like, okay, but over here on this corner, you have four white men. And, and what do you think they're up to? Well, I mean, they don't look like they're doing anything. Why is that? Why is it that people immediately see black men and, um, and think that they are a threat, but you will see these four white men and not have that same connection. 
and that is what we have to do and that's systemic racism and that's what we have to treat to, to teach our society as in you need to uh, evaluate them at the same like if this group isn't a threat this group should not be a threat just because they're wearing baggy clothes and they're black men you should not think that they are, are an immediate threat because i guarantee these four white men over here are going to a bar to 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 drop a roofie into some girl's drink and to later on um date rape her that is more common those are the ones you got to worry about and 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 it's and no one ever thinks about that you know they just think that a lot of these black men are out there just trying to shoot up everything and you have these quiet predators over here and i think that's one of the reasons that's why this election is so big right now for the country because a lot of times whether it's violence or whether how people perceive the next person Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what I really want this program to be here to talk about, whether it's business, but also the things in life that say to people, uh, you know, how people can get along. We know the military, people get along. Mm -hmm. they, they really. I mean, yeah, there's problems here and there. And you couldn't stand people until you left them. <laughs> and then you realize, you know, it's like, hey, Jonesy was okay. And yeah. The one that you didn't think would because we took people at who they were at that point in their life. Uh, and yeah. we all can, we can all make this Oh, I, I can still, I still hate some people, actually. Well, hate's a strong word, but I still dislike some people that, They yeah. did some things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All righty, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, we're just here with uh, Steph B. So where were you stationed in Germany? Dexheim, okay. Dexheim, Germany, 123rd Main Support Battalion, 1st uh -huh. Armored Division. Okay, we were in now. Uh, we were in Bombholder. Me and my wife. Oh yes. Yeah. Yep, Bombholder. Well, Everybody. we had a we had a sister station there. Everybody went to Bombholder. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, the time is 2:59. I'd like to thank you for tuning in this week on the mic with Mike. It has been an eventful week, but we're going into an eventful weekend and leading up to next week. As you've been hearing, I am going to have a. Uh, an election show. Steph just looked at me like, whoa. Okay, so we're going to have our favorite African-American MAGA supporter, Matthew T. Redmond's going to be here. Skylar Washington is going to be here. Skylar Washington, I could say she's on the liberalist side. She is black and Jewish and a nurse. So she is, uh, and she's out doing... Uh, some good things out there. Shout out to all the caregivers out there. Let's take care of each other. Let's beat this corona thing. 100. That's uh, I'd like to thank all. Paula Bardell, thanks for coming in. Tom Childry, the credit card guy. Uh, we'll talk to you next week. And as I always say, look to my wife, baby, as soon as it's over, I'm on the way home. We're trying to beat the corona. Yeah. All right, take care. WJFN, Goochland, WJFN, Chester. <laughs>
Trading involves financial risk and is not suitable for all investors. Past results do not guarantee future performance. Stock market have you nervous with all the massive fluctuations? With the markets returning to pre-coronavirus levels, unemployment rates shifting, and the upcoming election, it's virtually impossible to guess what will happen next. With Vantage Point, you don't have to. Text MONEY to 411411 to find out how our technology can forecast market trends up to three days in advance with incredible accuracy. Text MONEY to 411411 to get what you need to stay ahead of market trends and find 